On this episode, we were chasing tailwinds to find a Florida panther. What is that? <laughs> I'm excited. Is that supposed to be a panther? Yeah. What does a panther sound like? <laughs> Clear? Now let's go do it. I can't believe I get to say it. <gasps> oh my God. You ready for this? Nope. Cheers. Cheers. I know you brought some snacks. We are packed and pre-flighted, we're ready to go. And who doesn't love to fly with a mission? So tell them what our mission is. So we're on the way to Naples, Florida to find the Florida Panther. <laughs> We just told our friend, she's like, where are you going? And we told her we're going to Naples to find a Florida panther. She's like, I'm not sure if you guys are kidding or not, but good luck. And we are not kidding. We really want to find one. We've gotten really close last time we were there. So what are you going to do if we actually find one? All I got to do is outrun you, right? That's not what a husband should say. Oh, no. <laughs> well, that's what a husband's going to do. <laughs> okay. Well, maybe I should just leave you. <laughs> all right. But in all seriousness, let's get in the plane and... Go find a big Let's cat. Let's go do this. <laughs> so our flight was from Atlanta, Georgia, down to sunny Naples, Florida. When most people think of Naples, they think of the expensive shopping, they think of the restaurants, they think of all the beaches. But what they might not know is that Naples sits right on the edge of the Everglades. And the Everglades is host to such a wide variety of wildlife. So if you love the outdoors and nature, you could really love going to Naples for those reasons. Naples is truly wild. It is a safari of the South. I mean, it's funny, but what can you, you can find a alligator, a crocodile, a black bear, python, anaconda, and hopefully we're gonna find a Florida panther. Falcon Traffic Skyline 245, Charlie Sears taking off runway 31. It will be a departure out to the south. Falcon. All right, we're lined up on runway 31. Lights, camera, action. We're in the green. We have one good engine. Waiting for our 59. There we are. Okay, gaining some speed. Ups are coming up. We got one plane in the downwind. Really good performance today. This plane just wants to climb. We're at 1,300 feet per minute. We are moving. And we're not, we're even about 10 knots above VY. I'm just kind of doing a gentle climb out and it's just loving the cold weather. All right, we're coming up on 4,000. That's quick. <laughs> performing well. And here we are. Flight planning this time of year can be a little bit tricky. It's cold out, it's winter, which means the clouds can be holding ice. And in a small airplane like the 182, we do not want to be around any ice. All right, we have the G1000 set up on autopilot. We're cruising at 5,000 feet. We have Falcon to Naples in, which is uh, 443 miles about. Should take us about three hours and 10 minutes in this airplane. So not too bad to get to Southern Florida and find some warmer weather. <laughs> uh, I can't wait. It, it was about 42 degrees this morning. So after some delicate flight planning, I saw that when we were going to be in the clouds, it was going to be warm enough. So we took off and sure enough, we're in the clouds. And lo and behold, this one was very nervous. <laughs> 
So a struggle when we are well, flight planning is it is winter. We are, we're in the south, but it's still winter. So we decided to stay low. Uh, the best speeds of this airplane is six to 8,000 feet, but we decided to stay low at 5,000 to stay at the warmer temperatures because we knew we were going to be IFR. It's a total whiteout for us right now, which is fine. I'm reading nine degrees Celsius outside. So that's good uh, for us. Staying low is definitely the, the name of the game right now. I, I'm still a private pilot, so when you look out and all you see is white, it doesn't make me feel that comfortable. Worst case, if we start to pick up icing, our plan is to go down. Yeah, definitely down, because you can see you know, there is some moisture in these clouds. But what does help is the Garmin avionics that we have on board makes you feel good about everything that's going on. But as a private pilot, I still am just a little bit nervous when I can't see what's in front of me. <laughs> All right, well, let's sit back and relax. I know you brought some snacks. Um, I know you brought drinks too, lots of water, but I highly recommend that you uh, just take little sips. We got a three hour flight, so be easy on the water. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Let's see what we can make without having to take a bathroom break. Yeah. <laughs> we got to fly a Cessna Skylane 182 down to Florida. This is one of my favorite airplanes. It's a classic Cessna high wing four seater airplane. It's been around since the 50s, so that's longer than six decades this airplane has been out and about and flying. And and most importantly, it has the fuel efficiency for us to be able to fly from Georgia down there to South Florida without having to make any fuel stops. But the problem with that is that we had a flight that was about three and a half hours. And how did you feel about that? You know how rough it is for me to hold my bladder. <laughs> That's a long flight for anyone to hold their peace. So what I did for you, Kevin, I bought you this recently. Tell the people at home what we're looking at. What we have here is the most premium gift that Mindy has ever bought me, and it is a piece of plastic that has a cap on it. It's a portable urinal. <laughs> so instead of bringing a Gatorade bottle, you know, you got this really classy... Classy? Bottle. Yes. You're well, welcome. Thank you very much for the kind and thoughtful gift. So now we can fly even farther. Okay, just checking in now. We just crossed the border into Florida and we got a reroute which brought us around Tampa's airspace. We kind of expected to get a reroute, but we're still at 5,000. The weather's cleared up. We were in IMC for a long time. How'd you feel about that? Well, I kept saying something about it, but we the temperature was good. Uh, so there was no ice in. Right. And it was comfortable after a little bit, for sure. It was really smooth, but you're not used to flying an IMC, so you're just a, you're a private pilot, VFR only. And yep. so when we get in clouds, you're still a little tense. I was, I was a solid hour, at least, of nothing. And it was yep. cool. It yeah. was a fun little experience there. Right, and like you said, it was warm enough for no icing. Now it's warm enough where I shedded my jacket. Yeah, I turned the, the air vents on now. Yeah, we're definitely in Florida now. Right when you cross the border, it's like, there's the heat. After a few reroutes, getting through some different air spaces, we got clear to land at Naples Airport, which is the best words to hear as a pilot. Wind 320 at 6. Clear to land, runway 23, 5 Charlie Sierra. Unfortunately, we didn't get vectored over the water today. We got vectored inland for a straight in on 2-3, so as we're landing, we're pointed towards the ocean, but I always love flying down the coast. It is pretty. It's really cool from this angle, too. Yeah, the way the sun's reflecting looks very inviting. Autopilot's still on doing its thing. I'm just managing power. Yeah. I love Garmin. All right. Below 120, we're gonna go flaps 20. And we were cleared to land. Bell gear is down and locked. And always down and locked. And now I'm going full flaps. So Mindy's landing, per the huge, I don't like saying it, was perfect. Ah. She buttered it. But as a passenger, 
I think I would rather you have a nice, smooth landing. Duh. But as your husband, I don't want to tell you that you have a nice, smooth landing every single time. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, as my husband, I don't want you to be a good landing. I'm like, no, yeah, you do. <laughs> All right, Kevin, what did you think of the flight? I did it. <laughs> you did what? I made it. You made it? What? Without using the bathroom. Yeah, I was a little concerned about that. I know, I know. <laughs> But we did it. We're yes. here in Naples. It's beautiful. It's sunny. And we're going to go find some panthers. After we landed, we got the airplane situated. We got our suitcases out. And then we were off to the hotel to get a good night's sleep because the next morning we are waking up bright and early to start looking for the Florida panther. To find a Florida panther, it's pretty simple. Drive out to the Everglades and then walk around for a while. So that's kind of what we did. The first place we stopped looking for a panther was the Crew Bird Rookery Swamp Trail. Say that three times fast. Crew Bird Rookery Swamp Trail. Crew Bird Rookery Swamp Trail. You sound like you had a little too much of this. <laughs> this trail is really gorgeous. It starts on a boardwalk and then it gets to just a very narrow dirt trail. And on both sides there's water and you do not know what's in that murky water. It can be a little freaky sometimes with how narrow it is. Yes, the trail went into like three foot of water and, and this is gator infested water. Gators, Mindy, gators, Mindy. Like we just took our shoes off and went through it. You know that there's alligators and snakes and stuff everywhere, but luckily the water was clear over the trail. So I felt okay going through it. We almost had to go through it though. We drove all the way out there. We're finding a Florida Panther. We were determined. So we're walking down the trail and I hear this like knocking sound. <laughs> and we come around a corner and there's this huge like water bird. Was it a water turkey? I think it's dead, buddy. Go ahead and eat it. And he's on a log and he's got a fish about this big and he's banging it against the log and making this outrageous noise. Like, I guess he was trying to kill the fish before it went in his tummy, that way it wasn't like swimming around in there. I think the poor guy didn't realize that he killed him a long time ago. <laughs> Ultimately, we left with no panther sighting and we carried on to our next spot. Corkscrew Swamp Sanctuary is a boardwalk through the Everglades. It is a really awesome place to go hike and to just experience really what Florida has to offer out in the swamp. The world in a tangle, it's time to make a change. I'm gonna move away and change my name. I said the world in a tangle, what's going on? Let me hear that mandolin a while. We knew we were hot on the trail of a panther because there was a volunteer there on the boardwalk and she shared with us a very special story about a time that she saw a panther right there at Corkscrew. After we were closed, then in a year ago, August, we were allowed to um, come and sweep once a week. So I think it was our reward. We were outside the back of the Blair building, like on the railing, and there's a little, uh, you know, like stream and stuff. It just walked, not a stream, but it walked up, got a drink, it looked at us, it just looked at us for a while. It was there like five minutes. It oh my gosh. To see it, and I think it was because we were sweating so much and working so hard. What a treat for like you guys. Reward. Nature gave us a reward of seeing the pig. It just walked right up. Was it a male or a female? Oh, I don't know. You I don't know. know? Was it, it big? Was amazing. Was it a big one? Uh, yeah, it was a full grown. So we got close. We got confirmation that a panther was there but we didn't get to see one, so on to the next spot. The Thakahatchee Strand Preserve State Park is a really cool spot because we didn't have to walk. So now we're in the Thakahatchee. As we're driving through this trail, there's water on both sides, but you have to watch out because old Kevin here almost ran over something huge. We're driving along and we see a monster, not a cat. Look at this beast. Truly a dinosaur. What should we name him? Tom. Jerry. Okay. <laughs> that was easy. We'll compromise, Jerry. 
later on, we were pulled off to the side of the road and we had another super freaky experience. I was in the car and Kevin was looking into the water and he comes back covered in goosebumps. And he's like, Minch, you gotta come look at this. You gotta come look at this. Oh my God, do you see it underwater? <gasps> I've never got to see one swim underwater like that. Holy, okay, imagine this. This is murky water and you're coming down to the lake and you have no idea that this 12, 13 foot gator is under the surface. That's the freakiest thing. We left the fack with no panther siding. We tried really hard there, but we went to one more place. We went to an airboat ride, which you would normally never catch us at that sort of tourist trap. This is the revenge of the commissar. I think the best part about the airboat was the guide. He was a cowboy, a Florida cowboy though. He was truly a cowboy. Every time there was an opening big enough, he would make the airboat go in a big 360. He'd be splashing water everywhere. He let out this huge yee-haw. Yee-haw. Okay, it was more <laughs> like your yee -haw. Well, I can tell you where you're not gonna find me and that's in the Everglades after sundown. So we headed in for the night and that way we could go to one more place before we took off the next day. And this was a super secret place that you had picked out and you promised me we would find one here. You didn't think we would come all the way to Naples and not find a Florida Panther, right? So we headed over to the I can't believe I get to say it, but we found one. Oh, this is the first time she's walked away. Can't believe it. It wasn't in the wild, but there's a Florida panther. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a Naples Zoo, but I knew we were gonna find a panther there. That was a good call, Kevin. And in fact, it's on their website, so that's maybe the first place we should have went. <laughs> we got to see this Florida panther named Athena. She's a rescue from the Everglades, and we were really lucky to even see her at the zoo because normally they're hiding in the back, but she was hungry, man. Oh yeah, she was pacing back and forth. It was really a treat to finally get to see a panther, and she was a wild panther at one point. They had all the stats on her. So True. technically, we did find a wild hey, we did panther. It. Well, Kevin, I gotta say, I thought I was gonna be much more scared when we were gonna come across a Florida panther. Well, the panther we found, she had a name, and she was behind a really high fence. That wrapped it up. We got to see our panther, and that's it for this one, so Come with us next time to see where we are chasing tailwinds to next. Technically, we found a panther. All right, well, <laughs> let's sit back and relax. I know you brought some snacks. <laughs>